Hi, this is Carrie Peterson, Online Marketing Manager for Upper Deck. Tonight we are here with Eddie Guardardo. Welcome. Thank you for having me. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. Good. So we just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, collecting baseball cards. Right. Now, growing up, did you have any baseball cards or memorabilia items that you collected? And which ones stand out from your collection? Well, I tell you what, I, I know you guys heard this plenty of times. It's the old uh, cards in the spoke things mm -hmm. when you had a bike. You know, you hear that click and click and mm -hmm. click. But uh, obviously, you know, being a major league player now and, and growing up, trying to be, a, you know, always that was your dream to mm -hmm. be a major league player. Uh, collecting cards was one of my favorites. Cool. Uh, I actually have some still. I mean, uh, you know, I don't ever. I have three kids of my own now, so hopefully mm -hmm. they, it turns out to you know take it to them, and hopefully they can save them just like I did. But obviously, having baseball cards was a lot of fun to me collecting, no doubt. Good. Now, what was it like for you when you first saw your own Upper Deck baseball card? And do your kids have one? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see that smile? <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, every time now, still to this day. Uh -huh. I mean, because, you know, they print them, you know, year by year. And I've been, yeah. you know, fortunate, been playing this long in baseball that, um, you know, uh, I look at the card and I'm like, what picture did they get this time? Mm -hmm. see, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know? But that the first time when you see it, obviously, big smile on your face. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you accomplished something in your life. And uh, uh, that's how I felt. Nice. So you've been in the league for a while now, and do you have any single accomplishment that sticks out as a favorite memory? Um, you know what? Just making it. Mm -hmm. Just no doubt. Uh, give you a little story if we have time, you know, um, yeah. getting that first call. I uh, was in AA in Nashville with mm -hmm. my uh, fiance, my wife now. Mm -hmm. uh, getting that call, and you know, you never, uh, you never think the call is going to come. You're just hoping. Mm -hmm. And the call came, and uh, I threw up in the toilet. Oh. That's how nervous I was. <laughs> oh, man, I was so nervous, um, but excited and nervous at the same time, you know. Uh -huh. Like, is this really happening? And uh, so, you know, I caught a plane that day, and I was in wow. Minnesota. I was with Minnesota Twins at the time, and get to yes. Texas. We're in Texas, and it really didn't hit me until I walked in the the locker room and mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember a manager name of Tom Kelly uh -huh. uh, he was standing there and uh -huh. he said welcome and you know I'll, I'll never forget that so that was that was probably my memorable day great yeah. so did you have uh, one or two guys growing up that you looked up to that you tried to emulate up oh, there on the mound oh, and yeah. hitting and uh -huh. and pitching my favorite of all time though was I grew up in Stockton California mm -hmm. And Oakland was right down the street, Oakland A's. And uh, the guy I really, really watched was Dave Stewart, uh, nice. one of my favorites. Um, you know, I watched him pitch because the way he went at guys, uh, how he was aggressive, intimidating out there. And I really liked that. And I, and, uh, and I got a chance to meet him, uh -huh. you know, when he was with Toronto. And actually, I was running foul poles one day, and he was running. And, you know, as a young rookie. Yeah. You know, you're you're running next to your a guy you watched all your career, mm -hmm. and uh, he was there, and I stopped him. I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. That's why I was nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, I stopped him, and we talked, and you know, now I really love him more as a person. You know, so because the person he is, yeah. and uh, that was awesome. Yeah, Dave Great. Stewart. Awesome. So, do you enjoy uh, autographs? Are a big part of the industry oh, yeah. with with fans, and so do you enjoy getting uh, giving autographs? No doubt. No, what what other question? I wish. Uh, I'm sure a lot of guys do. I wish everybody does it. You know, mm -hmm. um, because you know during BP or you know, after a game, a lot of guys had a bad game or something. They're waiting for you. But you know what? You almost you, you got to stop and think about if you sign, you might change a person's life, mm -hmm. a little kid's life. You know, open his heart up, and you know, get a autograph from whoever the Eddie Gordado, you know, he goes home and shows his mom and dad and, mm -hmm. you know, he's laying in bed that night, you know, and he says, maybe, maybe I want to be a baseball player, you know, and got hope. Absolutely. And that's what you do. Great. Yeah. Now, is there anything unusual that sticks out in your mind of uh, being asked to sign? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, I've got a lot of different things, uh, cell mm -hmm. phones, oh. tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, what, one kid asked me to sign is, uh, what is it, the PCS players? or Oh, PS2? Yeah, or, those uh -huh. games that carry. I'm like, you know what, <laughs> I can't do that because these probably cost a little bit of money and your mm -hmm. parents would be very upset if I signed that. <laughs> no, no. 
I said the value mm. will go down on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably about the weirdest thing. How funny. So uh, as far as major league records go, what do you think is the one record that will remain untouched? I'd probably say the Lou Gehrig uh, record hitting streak. Uh-huh. Uh, 56 games straight. Uh, okay. That's going to be tough to hit. I mean, yeah. as a pitcher and, you know, playing so long and watching guys – you know, getting eight, five game hitting streaks. I mean, that's tough. I Absolutely. mean, just five or eight, you know, uh -huh. we're talking 56. And uh, I think that's one going to be the one of the toughest ones to break. Cool. But records are meant to be broke, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Great. So did you have any superstitions uh, in the locker room or with your uh, your jersey number or any pregame ritual that you had to do? Oh, well, yeah. I think we all have them uh -huh. um, as players and I think uh, one of mine was, um, <laughs> it's just going to be funny, mm -hmm. when I was playing with Minnesota, one of mine were, I had these little homies, I don't know if you, <laughs> did you get them at the, the yeah. quarter machines, yeah, you know? I, know, I know what you're They're talking about. They're about that big plastic, and I collected them, mm -hmm. you know, put them in my locker, and mm -hmm. I ran off 13 straight saves, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, <laughs> go back there and I used to always mm -hmm. touch them that's mm -hmm. what it was I mean, I touch them and put them straight before I go out mm -hmm. in the fifth inning okay. and uh, that was one of my superstitions I had and everybody used to make fun of me you know Great. hey Eddie's little homies don't mess with them I was like, you better not and, hey you uh, don't mess with, yeah. with something that's working you know <laughs> exactly so Great. you know I have little ones here and there but that was probably my biggest one because uh, that was 02 and I will never forget it it was one of my better years so Great. you can't forget that Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate well, it. Thanks for having me.